Well, welcome back everyone to the CMU Civic Forum. We're so grateful for you joining us today. And we are joined today by an amazing and esteemed panel of um, friends, colleagues, and students to talk about bridging the divide and using the power of the arts to do so. I'm joined today by uh, Dr. Donita Mosby-Tyler. Donita, a longtime friend uh, of the university. Dr. Tyler has been um, most recently as the chief catalyst of the Equity Project, a uh, consulting firm that has assisted a number of organizations mm -hmm. around Colorado like CMU with conversations and human strategies around diversity, equity, and inclusion. She's also served as a former senior vice president at the Children's Hospital and maybe um, for, relevant to this conversation as a board member for the Bonfies Stanton uh, Foundation. Joined by Representative Leslie Herod, who represents um, the city of Denver in the legislature, mm -hmm. serves as chair of the Appropriations Committee, serves on the, um, the very powerful State Joint Budget Committee, also serves as chair of the Colorado Black Democratic Legislative Caucus, and previously served as chair of the Finance Committee and vice chair of Judiciary. For this conversation, maybe most importantly, you serve on the board of the Museum of Contemporary Arts. That's right. Leslie, we're so glad to have you. Uh, also joined by the department head for theater arts here at CMU, Mo Lamy. Mo's got a, a really remarkable career, both on the academic side as well as um, on the business side of performing arts. And we're looking forward to, to hearing more about your perspectives Thank you. as well, Mo. Joined by a couple of our great students today. Lauren, a uh, student from Colorado Springs, we're gonna talk more a little bit about your work as a major in uh, acting, directing, and technical theater. And Issa, uh, Issa is a local student who's both majoring in the performing arts as well as in psychology, and we're so glad that you all uh, are willing to join us today. Well, so I'm gonna start our panel, um, Dr. Tyler, with you. And you've been working in the around Colorado and in Denver specifically around issues of equity for years. But in your role as the as a board member in Bonfi Stanton, um, there's a quote attributed to you that I thought maybe would kick us off here. Sure. And it reads this way. Art is an integral part of diversity and has everything to do with every other part of diversity. You can't talk about race or gender or age and other diversities without discussing the impact and implications of art. The reverse is also true. You can't talk about art without talking about the impact and implications of race, gender, age, or other diversities. We must begin to talk about the connectedness of who we are and how it impacts where and how we live. Art is diversity. So what a perfect way <laughs> to launch into this conversation. Dwanita, I wonder if you might share with us a little bit about your experience and how art uh, in your experience is able to bring people together and bridge divides. Yeah, it's an interesting time in history, I think, to think about the role that art and the arts play in our communities mm -hmm. in a time when I think socially and politically we've got so many divides. I think art then becomes that galvanizing force that brings us together that creates the space for equity and equality to live. Mm -hmm. It is the greatest example that I have seen in my lifetime of what to be inclusive really looks like. Mm -hmm. It creates a sense of belongingness for anyone that engages in it and with it. Mm -hmm. And I think it allows for the voice of people that might not have voice on a societal level mm. to have it illuminated on a stage or in a place um, that has art at, as a, at its core. Maybe tell them a story that we might not yep. get to hear otherwise, right? That's right. That's absolutely right. That's the most important thing about it. You know, Representative Harrod, you talked about this idea when we were chatting earlier about art being a place where maybe we, we come from different places or mm -hmm. something and we sit down in a theater like this and we enjoy a show and it's that mm -hmm. moment where maybe we think different, maybe we worship different, maybe we vote different, but there's this moment of detente mm -hmm. where we sit and enjoy that together. I wonder as, as an elected official, how have you seen the power of the arts bridge 
things like the rural urban divide and other yeah. political divides that we have. Yeah, well, I am a lover of the arts to start with. I just, I, I love them. Um, I feel like uh, arts really help us tell our stories. Mm. And really the shortest distance between two people is our stories. Mm -hmm. And so having the arts central in so much of what we do, I think helps us to have commonality, common ground, and understand each other in a way that is, um, you know, it's not so abrasive, mm. <laughs> you know, it's mm -hmm. not so confrontational. Um, and it kind of lets the guards down. And so when we talk about bridging the rural urban divide, the arts are a great way to do that, whether it's through documentary, whether mm. it's performing arts, the theater, um, that's really how we can have these conversations and help folks realize that there's a lot more commonality and understanding than we initially might have thought there were. Um, you know, uh, a lot of folks see uh, rural, especially rural Colorado or mm. rural areas mm -hmm. as, as, as white and conservative and just very different than um, urban areas, mm. right? And which people see as, you know, people of color and, um, you know, just different food, different experiences. Mm -hmm. And what I don't think folks realize is that we all have something very in common. Mm. You know, my grandparents uh, were, were on a farm mm. uh, and I spent my summers in rural Mississippi on a farm and those stories can be told through the arts and understanding how, again, we're different, but we're very similar, mm. uh, really comes up through our telling of our stories and through the arts, which I find just so fun and fascinating. And I've learned so much about rural Colorado mm. through my exposure to the arts out here. And folks who think rural Colorado is not a place to go food to for the arts, they're missing out. <laughs> they're really missing out. So. Well, I love that that idea of um, you know being a place where we can tell stories alongside one another. Do you? You're passionate about this. Where, yeah. What What was the start for you? What What about your experience as a young person or as a young adult that really got you passionate about the arts? Yeah. Well, that you know, I didn't necessarily know that I was passionate about the arts. I'm military brat, so mm. graduated high school in Colorado Springs as well. Um, but I was born in Germany and lived in Korea and all around, and um, really loved just getting involved in dance or arts in some way as a way to make friends and get mm. to know um, the, mm. the community that I was a part of because I traveled so much. Literally, a, a tool to create connection. Literally. And, uh, mm. and you know, surprise to no one, I was uh, very interested in politics mm. and, you know, went to school for political science and ethnic studies. Mm. Um, and as I was studying political movements uh, and, and really social movements throughout the world, I realized that none of them that were successful, um, or all of the ones that were successful, I should frame, uh, had arts as a central component to them. Hmm. Whether it was the civil rights movement, the Black Panthers, you know, the Zapatistas, whatever it was, you were like, wow, you know? Um, arts was a huge component that brought folks together. Folks who were not necessarily activists or didn't hmm. see themselves as movement makers or change makers came together around, you know, the music or the dance or the imagery that was portrayed through these movements. And that was a part of their success. Hmm. I love that. You know, Mo, I want to bring you in here as a professor. I, I recall as a student, I, I had uh, Dr. Luis Lopez, who was a classicist in mm -hmm. literature, and he exposed me to a, a play by uh, Aristophanes called Lysistrata, right? Mm -hmm. And this, this great story about the women of Athens and Sparta who, who go on a sex strike, of all things, mm -hmm. to try and highlight two things, right? One, the fact that there were in a warring culture and what the problems associated with that. And the other was the agency of women. Now, this is in the ancient world. Mm -hmm. And understanding that art has always served as that social critique, has always served as that place where um, we can learn something about ourselves. And I just wonder, you know, as a professor, you've had experience um, getting to do that work with students. Um, what, what is that like? And, and what is what has your experience been in terms of um, engaging with students through the arts? Oh gosh, I feel like I have uh, been the beneficiary of uh, students like Issa and Lauren. Um, and I feel that way with the arts just entirely in my career. And um, I feel like I have been around such extraordinary people, creative people, um, people that had insights into the way the world works and the way that um, they could perceive um, their, their selves or their community in a way that would 
um, add such rich, richness to my own experience that mm -hmm. I just, I'm, I crave <laughs> the experience I have with students and with, um, and with artists. So it, it feels to me like I have the, the luckiest opportunity in mm -hmm. the world to um, work with people that have very different experiences, that have had, um, my, my experience as a, as a person growing, I grew up in Evergreen and um, my, I had uh, what I thought at the time was this kind of difficult um, family dynamic going on. And I think it was actually difficult, um, but it was a very isolating experience. And so what I discovered through literature and through theater was that my, ex my unique little experience wasn't actually that unique. Yeah. And that I had um, uh, all this discovery to make about the connectivity I had to other people who had been through difficult things or um, maybe perspective that maybe my experience wasn't that difficult or you know all that um, uh, insight that the arts uh, brought to, to my life. Um, so every day that I have in class is really as much a teaching, is a learning experience as much as a teaching experience, for sure. Well, Mo, you, you also um, understand this rural-urban divide as well. I mean, you spent time in Creed, Colorado, yeah. at the Creed Repertory Theater, right? Yeah. Talk to us about your experience and the observations you've had in those small towns and how, and how that has impacted the communities around it. Well, you know, it's funny. Um, when uh, when I first went down to Creed, which was in 2000, so it was a little over 20 years ago, and I was down there for 12 years, and um, there was the the old junior junior chamber of commerce that had actually opened their arms to the idea of starting a theater back in 1966, mm -hmm. and. Um, and those, a lot of those guys were still there, and they um, they called all the theater people people Piccadillys, and um, it was somewhat derisive, but it was also um, affectionate. They were we were their Piccadillys in a way too, um, but uh, it was quite wonderful to get to sit down with people that um, in in town council meetings that would then come to the theater. Uh, we did things like you were, you were talking about improv. Um, we actually started an improv um, uh, event that we did every Friday night, and that really brought in the locals. Mm. The locals loved that. Mm. Um, and it was a late night show, and they could have a beer, and they would um, have a great time. Um, so. It was just, it was such a remarkable, unique experience in my life to live in this little town of 400 people that would explode to 10,000 people in the summer mm. because of that, because of that theater being there. Yeah. Um, and just the impact that that little theater in a town of 400 people um, had on that community was profound. Dwayne, I want to come back to you for a moment because it seems to me that profound impact conversation um, is, is central to what we're talking about. You know, this building was built in 1968. Mm -hmm. uh, months prior to its opening, the debut of Sidney Poitier's Guess Who's Coming to Dinner was debuted, which was on the heels of, um, for the first time, more than a dozen states throughout the South, uh, the Southern United States, at that time still banned interracial marriage. Mm -hmm. The arts have always been able to serve as a conscience in some way for us, right? And, and to figure out how we come to grips with um, maybe things that we don't necessarily know how to talk about. And I wonder if you might just help us uh, expand on and think about how the power of this has served for underserved people um, throughout time. Yeah, you know, I think about that um that statistic that you just shared about interracial marriages and the time in history that we were in, I, I grew up in that time mm -hmm. in history where I wouldn't have even been allowed to be in a theater like this. As a matter of fact, I remember us climbing the back fire escape so we could sit in the balcony of theaters because we weren't allowed to sit with the rest of the population in the theater. There's so much history 
history that really informs what even happens on a stage today. Mm. I think about in my own history, you know, many have already talked about how they love the arts. I used to do one woman shows when I was seven. Wasn't really a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds it's, like something I need to see. Yeah, you don't need to see it. <laughs> uh, but I did it because I wanted the kids in my neighborhood to have the same access that I had. My parents mm. were able to get us in a theater. We eventually got to see a symphony or a ballet, mm. but the kids in my neighborhood didn't have that opportunity, so I created the shows myself. Every week there was a new play or a ballet or a skit, you know, whatever it was, and I sold tickets. It wasn't free. <laughs> That's a whole nother workshop, but it allowed people to have an experience in my mm. community that they wouldn't have otherwise. There, this notion of the arts and equity mm. is an important one, whether you're talking about a rural urban divide or socioeconomic divides mm. or generational divides, whatever those are, this notion of creating spaces mm. where people get to learn and grow and understand together is what this is really all about. Mm -hmm. The more we can do that, the more we can share different faces and stories um, like Representative Harrod talked about, the more I think we bring our communities together versus apart, mm -hmm. the more we create understanding mm -hmm. versus division, the more we create inclusivity versus exclusivity. You, you talk about that understanding, you know, I'm, I'm reminded of we're able to consume difficult stories mm -hmm. in a different way mm -hmm. through the arts, right? Yes. I mean, Beethoven was sort of a soundtrack of revolution without uttering a word. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. think about these, these stories over time and how they, they strike us maybe at a more intrinsic level. Mm -hmm. um, I want to bring in a couple of our students. Mm -hmm. So Issa, you're a theater major, mm -hmm. you're here, uh, you grew up in Grand Junction. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your story. What drew you to CMU? How did you get involved in the arts? What, what makes you passionate about this work? I feel my story's a little weird because I didn't do theater until the spring of my senior year of high school. I was always uh -huh. very involved in choir and I obviously loved music, but I was also very involved in soccer and that never allowed me to do much other than just soccer. Okay. So my, yeah, my spring, I was, I was finally able to do a show. We did Little Shop of Horrors. I, <laughs> it was the most fun and I just, I loved it. And then COVID hit and everything stopped. And, I you know one. I think I was just one day. I was sitting at my house and I was just like thinking about the show. And I was so lucky that we actually got to perform because I think mm -hmm. a lot of schools in the front range didn't even get to have their shows because they fell right when COVID stopped everything. And I was thinking, I was like the feeling I felt being on the stage and just creating something to show other people. I was like, I don't want to not have that feeling anymore. Mm -hmm. So I go on. This, I was already planning to go to CMU, <laughs> but I go on the website and I go to their department. And I'm like, oh, auditions have probably happened a long time ago. I probably couldn't get in. And I was like. No, nope, the auditions are still open. So I talked to my theater teacher at the time and I'm like, hey, do you think I'd be able to like audition? She's like, yes, let, let me help you pick out things. And I think I submitted my application either the day of the deadline or the day before. And I was like, okay, well, fingers crossed. And I eventually get, did get through that you know, stage of, you know, they see, they, see your, they see your songs, they see your monologue. And then I got to have an interview with Jeremy, who's the head of the music theater department. And just the things he would talk about with me, I was like, yeah. I have to, I have to be here. I have to do theater here. Mm -hmm. and, and then I was just so lucky that CMU allowed me to pursue a double major because I didn't want to give either up. I was like, I don't have to face that difficult decision. I won't, you know? And so I was like, yeah, I have to, I have to perform here and I've loved it ever since. It's been so amazing. It's awesome. I love that, Issa. And, and Lauren, tell us about you. You're, you're not from Grand Junction, right? You're from no. Colorado Springs? Um, Fountain, it's like right next to Colorado Springs. Yep. yep, and how did you find CMU and what brought you into the arts? Um, I'm like Issa, my, like, as soon as I was born, I, I saw, um, like, Greece, and <laughs> I was, like, in love with it. And, like, so I was always the sister dancing around, um, singing all the time. Um, and I, like, told my parents, I was like, please take me to a performing arts school, please, please. They didn't, but... Um, they, nevertheless, they supported me. Um, and then like, I didn't start doing um, theater until my sophomore year in high school. Cause like before then I was just like, 
Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, so I was kind of hopping around. I was in choir for a little bit as well. Um, but I finally got into the theater, and my first show was Pippin. Mm -hmm. And like, I was just the chorus member, but nevertheless, it was like really fun. And so I kept doing it. And um, like by senior year, I was like, oh, I have to make a decision of where I want to go and what I want to do. And so I just, I can't do any other job if there's no art. Like, I have to do mm -hmm. art, like, because I'm just too creative to not do something with my hands. Um, but so I decided on coming to CMU because my sisters, two of my sisters actually went here. Um, and also just all the audition process that like you have to go through for um, theater. Like when I came here, it was completely different than any other school I went to. I, as soon as I walked in, I just heard hello. And I was like, oh, hi. <laughs> um, I thought I was supposed to, it was supposed to be quiet and I'm supposed to just walk up there and do it and then leave. But they just had a conversation and it was just really fun. And so I was just like really hoping to come here. Um, I got accepted as a general theater major. And then once I got here, I ended up liking all my intro to tech classes. And so I decided to be a DT. And then I also wanted to say, like, I told them I still want to be on stage, though. And so they were like, that's fine. You can also be an AD. And so I decided to double major. <laughs> and um, I haven't regretted that because, like, I've been, like, since I've been here, just hopping around, um, going from backstage to being on stage. And I just get to learn so much about the theater process overall. And, mm -hmm. like, I'm just so happy I came here because I just really learned that theater isn't just about like entertaining the audience, it's also about sharing stories and just sharing painful stories sometimes too. And just, I learned so much about um, different cultures, different people of different backgrounds. Like I'm so happy we did Godspell mm -hmm. because that, I think that's the most diverse group, like cast I've ever been in. Cause there is no one who like had a similar background. And so I was just like really shocked and I was just, happy that we got to show everyone that because it was just like it was a fantastic message mm -hmm. wow. representative Harrod, you you're in this conversation in in the denver area of course but in denver has this rich vibrant um, arts culture it seems though as we look around the country and and especially in rural areas that people are retrenching away from that mm -hmm. how have you found ways to create community buy-in mm -hmm. and uh, momentum to continue growing and investing in the arts? Well, I think it's by exposure mm -hmm. um, and by just having you know, the conversation. Uh, what I love about what both of you said was first the excitement in your voices. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think people can feel that. But the thing about the arts is it does allow us to feel together mm -hmm. you know, and to mm -hmm. even go through mm -hmm. very difficult things mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And so well, I made a really conscious effort to have poetry, you know, leading my campaign efforts and mm -hmm. having spoken word town halls where folks could do um, whether it is spoken word or sing or whatever they wanted to do to talk about kind of what they were going through mm -hmm. um, and maybe how government could could change that or help that. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's one thing. But uh, and so I think that's like the human aspect of the arts. But we can't you know, understate the economic impact mm. of the arts, mm -hmm. the, the, the money that is driven into Denver simply because of our robust art mm -hmm. scenes is something that is a huge part of our diverse mm -hmm. economy. Um, and even through COVID, you know, when we had a lot of uh, the theaters shut down and, and, and the industry closing, we really realized how important the arts were mm -hmm. to who we are and defining who we are as a community and a culture and bringing neighborhoods together. And so we focused on making sure that the arts were a part of our recovery plan because mm -hmm. we knew that we wouldn't get back to where we were and we definitely wouldn't build back better uh, if we didn't have the arts as central to that. And so, you know, this is a message that I like to, to, to put out everywhere, throughout mm -hmm. Colorado, throughout this country, um, and throughout the world if I can, uh, because it's just so vitally important. But as a politician and, and someone who is in charge of the budget, we cannot understate the impact that it has uh, on our revenue, right, mm -hmm. and on our economy right here in Colorado. Uh, and it's quite robust. Donita is as you do your work um, and you're, you come alongside organizations talking about um, what are all the various strategies that you can include, you know, the, the complex tapestry that is our, our communities and our workplaces and so forth. How do you see the arts uh, bringing, uh, you know, I mean, I, I listen to our students 
and young people and getting young people involved and helping them see themselves. But mm -hmm. how do you how do you see the arts playing a role in that idea of inclusion and giving people a seat at the table? Yeah, I think we have to start looking at arts as not an appendage to something else, mm. but central to everything. Mm. And the more we can shift to that um, ideology about what we're doing, the better. You know, I would agree with Representative Harrod that the centering of the arts in Denver in the metro area um, was intentional. Mm -hmm. We have to get every community to do that sort mm. of centering so that the, 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 there's no option to the power of what the arts can do. I have a young son, he's 26 years old, he's an artist, and he has managed to be an ordained minister who blends hip hop hmm. and spoken word into faith. We need more people that understand the boundaryless nature of the arts. Hmm. It is probably the only place, our students might agree with me, <laughs> it is the only place in space where I think you don't have boundaries. Hmm. And how do you tap the full potential of human beings? You remove the boundary so they can express beautifully what the arts do for us. That's what we have to start to do and to center it. Yeah. I love that. And I, can I just add one thing? Um, the, the component that I also think people forget, and, and I love the, what mm -hmm. you said. I mean, you're a content creator mm -hmm. right now, which is huge, right? It's just like blown up, but it's not easy, mm -hmm. you know? And you're melding the arts with, with people and mental health and therapy. I mean, that's, so, that's what we need right mm -hmm. now in society. We can't understate though, and I think what people don't understand is that there's also a huge technical component to this, to this work. It is work, mm -hmm. you know? And, and the skills and the learning needs to happen. It's not just like, you know, throw it out there and see what, and see what sticks. Like you were learning, you know, all of this, these technical skills through this mm -hmm. university mm -hmm. and through these programs, which is also vitally important to, to make sure that we have that vibrant art mm -hmm. scene, but you shouldn't starve to death, right? Like <laughs> you should get paid for this work um, and folks should understand the skill that it takes for you that's to right. do your craft. Um, and I think that's something that, that you all must bring up here so well. I can hear it in the excitement in their voices but also um, in how you're, you're, you're acknowledging that there's multifaceted aspects to the arts, you know, and that you're allowing them to wrap all of that in together is really great. And I think that's how we're going to really build a society that values all parts of us. So I'm, I'm excited for what y'all are doing here. Mm -hmm. Mo, I, I, I think about your, you know, you oversee this program that has I think you were referring to the technical theater elements, yeah. right? The yeah. acting and directing elements, the musical theater, the there's all these these all these substrains of the work that you're doing. Tell me how you see that all coming together to to provide opportunities for this broad spectrum of students because it seems to me from the outside that you have one of the more diverse student departments um, or groups of majors at, at anywhere on campus. And I wonder if that's um, just endemic to the arts or if that's something that you've been deliberate to try and create. Um, I think it's both those things, actually. I think it's, um, you've all spoken so eloquently about the, the equity, diver uh, diversity, and inclusion aspect of the arts is just almost embedded in the mm -hmm. arts itself. Like it's, you almost can't avoid it. Um, but I, but we have to be intentional about it as well. Um, so it's both those things. Um, I, I love that uh, you recognize that the arts are not just getting up on stage and performing <laughs> because there are so many other parts of what we do. All these people that we're, we're sitting right now and on the stage and the house is behind us, but in front of us, we are looking at a set uh, that was built by all of these craftsmen that have to mm -hmm. learn how to uh, be carpenters mm -hmm. and how to uh, run our lights and how to uh, deal with our sound. We actually have a box office that uh, people have to know how to sell tickets. We have uh, house managers that we have to, they have to know how to deal with an audience that's mm -hmm. coming in. Um, so it's a, it's a multidisciplinary um, endeavor to um, share arts with people. And uh, I love it when students are crossing over, recognizing that there are a lot of different ways to fit in. And sometimes you come to the arts, I came to the arts thinking I wanted to be an actor and realized um, 
after performing and having long runs of shows and everything that I actually wasn't that interested in it. I was much more interested in the, in the creation part of it mm -hmm. um, and uh, the interpretation part of it. But I, didn't, I had to go through the process of my education <laughs> to actually discover that. And that's what we're trying to do is connect students to those, their own inner um, affinity for a particular thing, you know, mm -hmm. so that they can discover that. And sometimes that takes, you know, it can take, you might not really discover <laughs> ESA until 10 years from now, mm -hmm. what you really are going to hone in on. Mm -hmm. uh, but providing as many opportunities as we can is, feels like an important part of what, why we're here. Mm. Well, we're, we're so grateful for the, um, the, the conversation and our, our panelists today. You know, I, th I think about the work we're trying to get accomplished collectively, which is a more respectful conversation, a conversation mm -hmm. where we're um, engaging one another in a way that's, um, frankly, less corrosive and divisive than, mm -hmm. than what we're looking at often mm -hmm. today. And that, of course, is one of the centrality uh, points for our university is how do we have a more civil conversation? How do we make space for everybody at the table? And, and it just seems to me that in partnership with um, folks across the region, across Colorado, um, the arts has to be a part of that. Yeah. That the arts has to be a part of bridging those divides and helping us to have a more, um, a more civil conversation moving ahead. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's so central. Um, Civility is, is leaving us as a society. Mm -hmm. I think the arts could, could bring us back to each mm -hmm. other. Help us understand one another. Here, here. Absolutely. Here, absolutely. here, here. Mm -hmm. Well, we're, we're grateful for everybody's time today. Um, for those of you at home, thank you for tuning in today as we've been chatting about um, bridging the divide and the power of the arts. We hope you'll join us again at the Civic Forum here at Colorado Mesa University.